It's a book for the record books, one of the best-selling memoirs of all time. And its author, Mitch Album, is taking stock with our senior contributor, Ted Koppel. Tonight, Maury, Lessons on Living. This is Nightline. When I was at ABC News, we ended up producing three Nightline programs with a retired university professor who was dying of ALS, often known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Some mornings I'm angry and bitter, but it doesn't last too long. Then I get up and say, I want to live. What we could never have anticipated was that those conversations with Maury Schwartz would become among the most popular programs we had ever done. And that, it turned out, was just a beginning. Because among those viewers was a young sports writer, Mitch Album. I had been so close to him in college. I took every class he offered. I promised him the day I graduated that I would always stay in touch, and then I broke that promise. So for me, it was a question of, oh my God, he's dying. What do I do now, and how do I try to make up for what I haven't done in the past? Mitch began visiting Maury weekly, every Tuesday, as it turned out, until Maury died. And then Mitch wrote a book, Tuesdays with Maury. You may have heard of it. You're a good writer, Mitch, but you're not Mark Twain, for God's sake. So what is the chemistry after all these years now? How many copies has the book sold? 18 million, something like that. 18 million. Has there ever been a biographical work that sold more? A memoir? Not too many. Tuesdays with Maury was first published 25 years ago. Its ongoing popularity was celebrated recently at the National the Book Festival the... in Washington. This is yellowed with age. This is probably my third copy. Your third copy? <laughs> yeah. I read Tuesdays with Maury sophomore year of high school. So I was homework. Yes. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> it has crossed all kinds of cultural, ethnic, religious, racial boundaries. Yeah. What are people getting out of it that they don't get out of most books? Well, I've learned that the appeal of Tuesdays with Maury isn't my writing. I'm not Mark Twain. It's the story of a younger person who's a little lost and an older person who's about to leave the world who says, let me tell you what I've learned. Almost everybody can find themselves in one of those two characters. Well, why don't we ask you, what do you think it was about your version, Ted and Maury, that made it the most popular nightline ever? Clearly, there was a vulnerability that made Maury accessible to everyone. Mm. And when you see yeah, someone dying... Don't let go too soon, but don't hang on too long. Find the balance. They were watching him lose the ability to live. Yeah. And he never lost his dignity. The disease is not going to get my spirit. No. Yet my body will not get my spirit. And if you're thinking that's a theme that has dramatic potential, you'd be right. There is a play, and it has been produced. Molly Schwarz. In more languages than Mitch can recall. There's been like 600 different productions of the play. Really? 600? Around the world. It's pretty close. Hey, <laughs> and then there was the movie. Yeah, it's one trip to Boston. Quick little visit. Say I'm sorry and... Say goodbye. I do remember the first day I went to the set of the movie. Jack Lemmon was playing Maury and Hank Azaria was playing me. And I heard Jack Lemmon say, Mitch, when you learn how to die, you know how to live. Jack Lemmon told me privately that he had been diagnosed with cancer. I remember he asked me questions. He wasn't asking me questions about Maury. He was asking me questions for himself. He later told me that was of all the roles that he had played in his life, that was the one that meant the most to him. I'm going to come back next Tuesday, OK? The almost universal appeal of Tuesdays with Maury has produced a precarious tension between legitimate education and the pressure to merchandise. At the height of this, I got a note saying, we want to do a Maury calendar with expressions from Maury on every... I said, no. Then they sent a thing, we want to do a bumper sticker. I said, 
No. Then they said, someone wants to make a bracelet, WWMD. What would Maury do, you know, instead of what would Jesus do? Uh, Thank God I turned down every one of those things. Perhaps no one's life has been more profoundly changed by Tuesdays with Maury than Mitch's own. It turned your life inside out. Totally. Before Tuesdays with Maury, people would spot me in an airport. Hey, sports guy, who's going to win the Super Bowl? And I would say, Patriots, and just keep going up the escalator. After Tuesdays with Maury, hey, uh, my mother died of cancer, and the last thing we did was read your book together. Can I talk to you about it? Hmm. And you can't go, Patriots, you have to stop, and you have to listen. Most people in life, no matter how happy they look on the outside, are walking around with a piece of a broken heart. Mitch's initial motivation in writing the book was to raise enough money to pay Maury's medical bills. I believe, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, half the royalties went to the family. Continue to. And Mitch has become deeply engaged in charitable work. And that's totally due to Maury, 100%. Maury told me an aphorism about giving his living because I watched him always helping other people while he was dying. And I said, I don't get it. You're the one who they should be feeling sorry for. And he said, because that's taking, and taking makes me feel like I'm dying, and giving makes me feel like I'm living. Mitch now <laughs> operates nine separate charitable operations in Detroit and an orphanage in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I go every month since 2010, and Maury's right. I'm more alive during those moments than I am on anything when I'm writing a book, power goes out all the time, it's hot, it's sweaty, it's uncomfortable, but I always sleep so much better there. I got it on tape too. Mitch has about 20 hours of audio conversation with Maury, permitting listeners to his podcast today to eavesdrop on moments more than 27 years ago. Mitch. Yes. Look at me. You're smiling. Yeah. I love you. <sighs> Come on. I'm assuming that didn't shock you when Maury said that. No, he used to do that a lot. Mitch, and he'd make sure that I was looking at because I was usually fiddling with something. I'd look over and say, I love you. By the end, I said, I love you too. You and Maury had a conversation come to the graveside on Tuesdays and we'll continue the conversation. Yeah. Have you ever done it? Oh, many times. Really? Oh, yeah. Almost every time I'm in Boston. He said, I'll make you a deal, Mitch, after I'm dead. You talk, I'll listen. I think it's the whole philosophy of Tuesdays with Maury, which is if you spend your time as Maury did, then when you die, you're actually not 100% gone. You live on in the heads and the hearts, everybody you touch. There's probably not a day goes by in my life that I don't hear Maury's voice. I hear him ringing around like a penny inside a piggy bank. When you pick it up and shake it, there it is.